It's a great pleasure to be here to talk to you today, and I must say, Ben, I really welcome everything you've said. And I'm pleased to report that actually a lot of businesses are already kind of demonstrating and experimenting with this core and more idea. And I think when people really understand that concept better, it will really help with their communications to all their stakeholder groups. Because, you know, there are some organizations that are really trying very hard to communicate with all their stakeholders, but they may be thinking of it in one giant communication. And as we know, that can be a little bit overload. So today I just thought I would share with you um, some key points about integrated reporting. And really integrated reporting means integrated thinking and reporting. The reporting is the outcome of the integrated thinking that happens within an organization. And I think we'll be hearing more of that later from Massimo and others um, when we're talking about integrated <coughs> thinking. Um, see. Oh, there we go. Um, so I may not have time to cover all of this, but if anyone's interested, I'd be very happy to share the slides um, afterwards. I thought we would just run over, and that's been covered a little bit already, you know, why IR might be important, um, what it is, um, a little bit of highlights of some of the impacts that it has, and then a little bit of insight into what we're seeing around the world, what governments, what um, regulators are saying, how investors are responding to it. And again, it's going to be very snapshot, um, but also importantly, how business is responding to this um, and their levels of maturity. Um, so why IR? And I think Ben touched on this very helpfully. And I don't know how many people have seen this graph before, this kind of thing. Um, I think possibly a few of you have, but really what it's illustrating is company market value, you know, in the 1970s, where 80% of the market, of the value of that company was intangible assets that you could kind of find on the balance sheet. Um, but in 2015... 80% of that market value is intangible um, and investors and other stakeholders are really looking to understand, as Ben said, what is that intangible value? How is it measured? How, how are companies reporting on their performance against that value? And that's really where joining up that financial thinking with thinking about those other areas, whether it's the resources um, that companies are using, whether it's human capital, the people, the intellectual capital, the social capital, etc. And that's really what we're talking about today. And just a quote from Unilever, the CFO at, at Unilever. He said a couple of years ago, the call for integrated reporting is beginning to rise in volume with public trust in business undermined by scandal after scandal, we would do well to listen and act quickly. Um, and I think that's what the, uh, the IIRC tried to do. Um, and, and I think companies have listened. And it, there are really quite significant changes in the way they are thinking and planning and reporting about their business. So what is integrated reporting? And I think I like this very simple diagram. You know, integrated reporting is enhancing the way that organizations think, plan, and report on the story of their business. And I think really it's as simple as that. Um, obviously, it's simple to say that, but very difficult um, to implement it in meaningful ways. I think there's a very um, important element of this, which is the long-term idea, which companies need to think short, medium, and long-term, because that really changes the decisions they would make. And this is about having future-fit organizations that are agile and can change and adapt to some of the really significant trends that are, are coming through and they, they have to respond to. Um, so integrated reporting is helping organizations um, to create clear, concise, and integrated communications to the market about how they create value, as we heard from um, Chiara, over time. 
Um, it's helping businesses to think holistically about strategy and plans, make informed decisions, manage their risks, and build investor and other stakeholder confidence and improve their performance. How many people are familiar with the framework? Put your hands up. Do you? So quite a few, but not everyone. So really the framework, sometimes people think of frameworks and standards as hundreds and hundreds of pages of detail. In, in this case, there's 30 odd pages that makes up the framework. And really it outlines the fundamental concepts, which is this concept of value creation. Um, it highlights the capitals. Um, there are six capitals in the framework, but that's not a requirement for organizations to report against all of those capitals. Um, it is really for them to consider whether they are important to their business and how they are managing and, and what impact they're having on those. And so those areas are obviously financial capital and manufactured capital, the buildings, um, all sorts of manufactured capital, natural capital, but also, of course, hugely important is the social and relationship capital that the business uses and affects, um, also human and intellectual capital, and the relationships um, that they depend on. Um, so the guiding principles I think actually a lot of what Ben talked about are, are very consistent with the guiding principles in the framework. To think about what's material to value creation, the conciseness, the core report, it really needs to be something that can be understood at a strategic level quite quickly. Connectivity between the different elements. So, you know, if you are um, reporting on your human capital and how you're looking after that human capital, the investment you might be making in training or whatever, what is the relationship between that and your financial capital? There may be some costs up front, but there's also value. Um, so it's almost like a pre-financial. It's giving a, an indication of the financials in the future. And, and if a company actually has issues with customers or issues with employees, that might be a risk factor for the future of the financials. Um, and then content elements. A lot of companies, certainly in Europe, are already reporting on many of the important content elements that you would include in an integrated report. And probably the priority is talking about your strategy, the environment that you're working in, how you're responding to that with your strategy and your business model. But obviously the performance, the outlook, um, perhaps integrated reporting has more of a focus on f the future and the outlook for the business. And as Chiara was saying, not just thinking historically and financially. So this is a lovely diagram. We call it the octopus. Um, <coughs> And I won't go into too much detail here, but it really represents in the middle the business model, the activities of the business and what they are doing to create value with, within the business. And then on the left hand side, you can see the capitals, the relationships, the resources um, that they're really depending on and pulling into the business. And not all of those, you don't have to use those names, but it's just a, a categorization as a guide. And companies will use their own words for those capitals very often. And then how those are transformed within the business. And then the outputs from the business, but also the outcomes in terms of the capitals. So if you're making a, a huge profit at massive social cost, um, you know, as, as a mining company that too many people are getting injured during the process, you know, this needs to be understood. And in fact, mining companies are some of the best reporters in the world because they do understand this and they're already um, sharing that kind of information. Otherwise, they lose their license to operate and, you know, the, the local government or whoever is responsible for them will close them down. So I think we can see that it makes sense, but it's not always easy um, to do in practice. And just a quick word on the IRC itself. Um, it's a very market-led organisation. 
It is a coalition of lots of other organizations who came together, and those organizations sit on the council and drive the strategy um, for the organization. And so it is very representative across the market, and you can see companies, the CEOs of companies, investors, regulators, NGOs representing all, all kinds of um, special interests, accounting and standard setters. And I think that's quite important, that we stay in touch with the market and be market-led, and that's why we did this um, process on our framework to get feedback on how, how it was going with implementation of the framework and where further guidance and things might be needed. Um, this is the vision of the IRC. Um, the IRC's vision is to align capital allocation and corporate behaviour to the wider goals of financial stability and sustainable development through the cycle of integrated thinking and integrated reporting. Um, I've mentioned already that we did this um, framework implementation um, and just a couple of words on that. I think what we found is the framework stands up pretty well to the challenges of implementation. It's quite flexible, um, it's not overly prescriptive um, and it seems to be making a difference. There are, however, several opportunities for further guidance and providing more examples of the practice because it is still a challenge for organisations to do this and I, and I think the ideas of, of Core and More are very helpful to that process. Um, we had 400 um, responses and I think it's quite important to say that there were some suggestions for minor revisions of the framework coming from a small number of people, um, but it was decided by the council that certainly at the moment and for the next two years, because the framework only came out in 2013, the principles are working well and we should continue with that with more guidance. And so there is some certainty for business that there won't be immediate changes to that. Um, the impact of IR, um, a little bit about what the research is finding. Um, we're, the IRC is actually about to launch um, a research database um, of academic research because there has been quite a lot of research on this agenda already. Um, we've got about 300 um, papers already, um, I think just with the abstracts going onto the database, but there's an opportunity to use that as a resource. Um, it, it will be open access when it's launched soon, <laughs> uh, possibly um, before the end of this year. Um, and just to highlight what some research is starting to show increasingly, actually, that reporting on this broader um, perspective, a broader information set, does have a positive impact on the cost of capital to organisations. And for many businesses, you know, that's really critical. Um, it's also demonstrating a better performance from those who are doing IR, um, maybe because, you know, savvy management, um, if they're thinking more broadly, they're taking account of the risks and the opportunities coming down the line. Um, that may be why. Um, also, it's, those companies are more likely to attract long-term investment. Um, and those organisations and their stakeholders will tend to have a better, a better understanding of the organisation's strategy and greater confidence, um, the stakeholders seem to have greater confidence in the long-term viability of the business. And I think those are some quite important, um, important things that we're seeing coming from integrated reporting. Um, on the next slide, um, we're just looking at again, some highlights, and these are rather general. There, there are some um, research papers and, and findings to sort of back up some of these, but just to pick out a few. Um, we are seeing changes. We're working with a network of about 90 organizations around the world, um, and this idea of integrated thinking, confidence in the metrics they're using to measure performance within the business um, and report externally, we're, we're hearing that companies are saying that it's having a positive impact on their decision making and their strategy development and those kinds of things. Um, also importantly, the dialogue between framework and standard setters, um, the kind of key areas, the capitals and the, uh, is almost like a, 
an umbrella for conversations in certain areas and the alignment um, between the standard setters and the IRC along with several other standard setters including the ISB, the GRI, um, the FASB in the US um, and um, the Natural Capital Coalition. Um, they are all they're all having this conversation, this dialogue. They're not creating a new organisation, but that is quite an important development, and I think it will help with the navigation of corporate reporting. And in a way, um, the principles of IR can be a tool for companies to help them navigate that corporate reporting landscape. And one of the outputs from this corporate reporting dialogue was actually to publish um, a corporate reporting landscape map which shows companies, you know, if you're trying to report on your think and plan and report on your natural capital, these are some of the standards that you can use that have detail in how to measure and manage um, that area of capital. Um, similarly, similarly for um, the other capitals, I think in human and intellectual capital, um, there is less maturity, but there are still some standards um, available. So um, governments and the like, um, it's quite important um, that we've seen obviously an, uh, the non-financial reporting directive coming out of the European Union and I think that's taken a step in the right direction for companies to make disclosures on this agenda um, and the, the directive is already seeing integrated reporting as a step ahead and the direction of travel which I think is helpful. Um, the Securities um, Exchange Board of India has asked their top 500 companies, not required them to do integrated reporting, but asked them to do integrated reporting because they think it will help investors understand and have confidence in those organisations. Um, in other places, um, the principles of IARA are being embedded into corporate governance codes um, in Malaysia, obviously the King Code in South Africa where it's been embedded for some time, um, that's a really important um, development that it's a really integrated reporting can be a good way of demonstrating externally the good governance that you have um, and also encourage improvements in that governance perhaps. Um, oh, there, there are the bodies, the corporate reporting dialogue participants, those are the standard setters that are taking part at the moment. Um, and just to mention some of the things that they are looking at um, in their objectives at the moment, um, so they are obviously looking at alignment and trying to avoid conflict, to clarify and resolve any emerging issues from their respective activities, and express a common voice. I think they are also planning to look at the SDGs um, as maybe some common principles that they can all they all sign up to, um, and that's helpful. Um, so I think we need to watch this space. Um, and um, the ISB, Hans Hugevorst, he is taking part actively in this discussion. And although he's not saying the ISB will take responsibility for all of this, he is really um, proactive on the agenda for, for this dialogue. So we come on to um, investors. Um, and investors, you know, there's, there's this idea that perhaps investors aren't calling for this. Um, and I think they are, but they may not be calling it integrated reporting. Um, I was quite interested in a survey that actually came out a couple of years ago, um, which was looking at what investors wanted, um, the importance of certain areas of information. And you can see on this graph the orange, is the colour coming out? Um, the, the orange on the left is how important um, a group of global investors thought that certain areas of information was, so how the, how the company creates value, the company's business model, um, cash, you know, all those kinds of things, super important. Um, but when they were talking about the quality of the information that they currently receive, you can see the yellow um, part of the bar chart, not quite so good. There's a real gap in the quality of the information they receive. And I think, you know, there's a real chance that things like um, the core idea of reporting, an integrated report, can help um, to meet that gap. Um, we're also hearing from 
you know, one of the world's largest investment organizations, BlackRock, the CEO, um, um, but this is the same across many investment organizations. They are calling on the CEOs in the marketplace to report on long-term value creation, to report on their strategy for longer-term value creation. And really, that's where the IR framework can be a tool to do that, and that's what we're starting to see happening. Um, so what, what businesses say? Um, they say quite a lot on this agenda, and I may have too much information in my slides, but um, I'll give it a go. Um, so just pulling out a few statistics here, 79% um, of non-executive directors um, in a South African study, I think by the um, SICA, the Institute of Chartered Accountants in South Africa, um, said integrated thinking increases the quality of an organization's dialogue with shareholders and other stakeholders. Um, we're also hearing, and this was a Black Sun survey, that 92% of, of companies in that survey said that integrated reporting was increasing their understanding of value creation. And that was understanding at board level, at management level, at employee level, at external stakeholder level. Um, they really saw a benefit. And it, it is that kind of story of the organization that people could easily access. Um, it's not quite um, an elevator pitch. You can't quite fit a, a, an integrated report into your journey in an elevator with somebody, but it is a really useful way of bringing the most strategically important things together um, and then using that as a real key for everyone to be on the same page. Um, 87% in the survey said IR participants thought that um, investors better understood their strategy, which is super important. Um, and I think it was a PwC survey. 80% um, of investors believe that the quality of reporting affects um, investors' perception of management quality. So investors, if they're, if they're seeing good quality management reporting or a strategic report or an integrated report, their estimation of the value that the management team is adding will tend to go up. So where are we at the moment in terms of implementation of IR? Um, we know that, in fact, since this slide was created a little uh, a couple of months ago, I think the latest number is 1,600 organisations that we know about doing IR. Now, they may not be calling it an integrated report, um, but they are using the principles of integrated reporting as a tool to help the quality of the reporting they do. Um, 62 countries, there are, there are organizations in 62 countries around the world doing this. Some countries um, like Korea and Israel and are just coming online with just a few, one or two in some cases. Um, but every G20 economy um, has organizations doing integrated reporting. And in some places um, like Japan, most listed companies, if not all, are on the journey to integrated reporting. Um, and that is the case in South Africa as well. Arguably, in the UK, the strategic report is so aligned with the framework that everyone doing a strategic report is at least on the journey to integrated reporting. I think they have a way to go in reporting on the multiple capitals, um, but it's pretty well aligned. And I'm going to have to do a, apologies. Um, this is just an example of some of the companies doing integrated reporting. And I just wanted to steal from Generali <laughs> because it was such a good example. I think Massimo is going to forgive me. Um, it was such a good example of this idea of an integrated report being at the core of reporting and linking to the other reporting that you do. In our modern society, there, there is no way that if we're going to achieve the, the SDGs, um, the, the Sustainable Development Goals, there's no way we can achieve that with only a very small amount of information. There is actually quite a lot of detailed information and the context for that information to make it meaningful that will be needed so that we can measure and manage what needs to be measured and managed. But this indicates that there is a way to kind of use the 
IR framework as a kind of golden thread um, to link your reporting and have a summary, have an integrated report, but make sure that's linked. And um, as Ben was saying, I think that idea, some companies like Schiphol, Unicredit in Italy, they're already, they already have strong um, online reporting where you can see the summary and link through to the detail. Um, an, an example, actually, is General Electric in, in the US. They found that when they did their integrated report, although it's not so closely aligned with all the elements of the framework, the, the idea of a core report is very much there. Um, and they found that the number of people downloading their report when they produced the summary went up hugely. You know, they had just a few people downloading their big report but um, hundreds of people downloading their summary, including their um, customers, their employees. Um, and so they've been really pleased about that. And just a word on the internal side, you know, I think the um, integrated information set obviously starts within the business. And what we're also seeing is management dashboards trying to use this information and connect it and understand the relationships between those different capitals. And this is just an example um, from PwC in the Netherlands. Um, and they use this uh, management dashboard for their own sort of management of the business, but they're also sharing it with companies. And um, most of the listed companies in the Netherlands are actually doing integrated reporting now. Uh, they're not necessarily using this as their management dashboard, but this idea that you, you can use technology to actually improve the way you can understand and think about these things, I think is quite important. Um, and there was a quote in the, the Corporate Finance Review from a, a guy who's um, a specialist in strategic management, Paul Barnett, and he said, the biggest benefits of IR will not come from being compliant or from attracting investors, although that does happen. Um, they will come from the discipline of needing to think, plan and manage in a more integrated way. This will help companies achieve the agility and flexibility they need to respond to change and seize opportunities. Chiara, have I got two more minutes for a few more quotes? Okay, um, I have a tendency to, <laughs> mm. <laughs> to talk too much. Um, so there's just a couple more quotes actually to, to end the presentation and, and give you a little bit of insight. So um, Votorantim is an actually a small, a, a small family owned business or relatively small um, based in South America and they have been doing integrated reporting and when we asked them about what impact that had had on the organization. Um, he said, the feedback on our first report was that information was clearer to stakeholders. Transparency has helped with bankers and investors. They understand our business better and have fewer questions. Um, and actually, we are going to hear um, from Delas, I think, later. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that because I know, you know, some people think, oh, this is just for big organizations. And in fact, in some ways, it's much easier um, for smaller organizations. And I've known CEOs almost go, right, I'm going to communicate my business model and my strategy in a different way. And they've almost gone on the back of an envelope and three months later, they've come out with a first integrated report. Um, it may not be perfect, but, you know, it is quite a doable thing um, and much quicker for, for a smaller organisation. Um, the Crown Estate, um, a real estate organisation in the UK, um, they are very advanced on this agenda. And in fact, their reporting is worth having a look at. Um, they go a step further and are starting to kind of monetize the, the other capitals and put um, a representative financial number against the performance of human capital, um, et cetera. Um, we have developed a new approach to strategy, incorporating integrated thinking, materiality, and the business model. Material issues have to be part of the business planning process in order to address the things that will impact the business. Um, and I think I might end on that one, but just share a couple of more that I noted down. Uh, another uh, CFO of a tech company, which is rather a memorable quote, um, 
um, said, in fact, in our conference um, in Amsterdam um, earlier this year, integrated reporting without integrated thinking is like pu putting lipstick on a pig. So, you know, it's not just about what you put out there and make it sound good. It's actually what you're doing within the organisation. Um, and um, another insurance um, company, Aegon, the, the CFO there, um, was talking quite, quite well about trust, so I'll just share that. Um, trust is at the heart of what Aegon, and indeed all insurance companies do, um, to deli they deliver financial promises to millions of people. Um, integrated reporting has helped us to better explain our business and communicate how we create value for our customers, employees, investors and other stakeholders. So although for an integrated report, when you hold the pen, you are perhaps primarily thinking about the investors in that business, if you are communicating well about your value creation, you will find that all stakeholders are really interested in that story. So it's not that an integrated report is only for investors. It is for all stakeholders. But in, in order for it to be reasonably concise and strategic, that is who you have in mind when you're writing it. Um, and I think on that note, I will leave it there. Thank you very much, everyone.